So we've got uh, Improving Performance, the penultimate chapter of the book. Very exciting. Uh, it was not a huge long chapter, although there were quite a few little exercises around. So uh, let's just go, go through it. Okay. Uh, the, I grouped some stuff at the start because I thought some bits were quite repetitive. So I just kind of figured there were some kind of useful kind of things to bear in mind or some points that kind of came up quite a lot so that we don't need to keep reiterating them. Um, firstly, that it, uh, the idea of performance improvement is like, it's not like a, like there's gotta be a point to it. Like, so um, it's not just the case that every single bit of code you write needs to be optimized. Um, the point is you need to think about what the code you're using writing is for and if it's going to be used like a lot or if it's something which is quite heavy duty then it's going to be worth optimizing but if it's like something that's pretty quick or very very quick anyway and the kind of amount of time you'd save on it is small then you could easily spend hours and hours working on something which will cumulatively save you a minuscule amount of time uh, so don't just optimize everything I guess um, then there was just generally this idea that like the way to be good at this is to be good at R um, so uh, generally as in the rest of life just uh, keep abreast of what's going on in R make sure you become as familiar as possible with different ways of doing stuff and then you'll get a sense a of how to improve stuff anyway who needs the chapter but also allow you to more effectively look for answers rather than uh, just kind of using vocabulary that doesn't make, which isn't the commonly used uh, words, etc. cetera. Um, fine, I think we're doing that. We're doing a book group, so it's all good. Then thirdly, uh, came up a few times was that it's worth keeping a record of things as you troubleshoot because uh, you might want to go back to some things or some things might work and then you like you lose them. Uh, because you haven't recorded them or just to kind of like if you're asking for help then you can kind of like tell people you tried already and not have them just give you answers that are basically things you've already done those those were some thoughts that came up in a few places so uh one of our first sections was code organization uh, a pretty short section um the main idea here was that you can uh, if you've got some options, then ultimately what you want to do is write them up as functions if they aren't already functions, um, because then they're easier to compare with benchmarking. And uh, the other point here was that you want to, if you do benchmarking, which you're going to be doing if you're optimizing, is you need to do it with like a reasonable number of cases or like cases that have possibly might have different things going on that are representative of what you're actually trying to do, because there can be quite big differences um, in performance of uh, different approaches, depending on you know, what exactly is being done. So something which looks good with like a really small number of cases might actually not be the best thing when you're, when you're dealing with like a really big set of data, for example. Uh, so one thing you can do is you can check for existing solutions. Um, some specific ones brought out here, uh, one was that you can look at CRAN task views, which to be fair, I wasn't familiar with, I don't think before, um, which uh, on these, they provide guidance on packages on CRAN that are relevant for tasks that relate to a certain topic. Um, so they can be useful. And similarly, you can look at reverse dependencies of RCPP because uh, they those kind of packages use C++, so they're likely to be fast. So that might give you an in to finding a faster solution. Uh, I don't know whether it also said, and I just didn't write it because I thought it was basic, but like with stuff like, well, I guess it kind of relates to, because there was, Measuring performance, improving performance. Like you can Google stuff and look on Stack Overflow and stuff as well. 
Um, okay, so then we've got, can we hit some exercises? What are faster alternatives to LM, which are specifically designed to work with large data sets? Um, I've got some answers. I mean, there were, I mean, there are quite a lot. Uh, so these, I looked at some, but I mean, I might have looked at other ones. Uh, that's just me making a thing. Hmm, that looks good and well generally formatted. <sighs> okay, fine. It didn't fail last time. But anyway, um, so I've probably done something wrong here, but I've got LM, I've got LM.fit, I've got dot LM.fit, and I've got speed GLM because that sounded fast. Um, generally, those get faster, uh, these three, uh, but then this one wasn't faster, but that might be because I messed something up slightly. Possibly. Um, did anyone find any other really fast ones or anything? I think there's also big LM, which is specifically um, for uh, for large, was it especially those with many cases? Mm. So for large data sets, I didn't test it. I can try testing. Oh, maybe shall we do this? Uh, <laughs> this is be Me attempting to. Do I have? Uh, let's just throw open a new. Have you guys been able to hear me the last like five minutes? No, no. probably not. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> absolutely not. Thanks. <laughs> I I found the Stack Overflow question. That is there a faster LM function which had like five different ones? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I put it in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat. Okay, let me, let me grab it. Uh, oh, my chat's gone. Chat. Fast LM as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say I got this by um, looking on various like Stack Overflow type things. So. Uh, fast LM implementations. Hmm. Can I just run that or do I need to use one of these packages? Oh God, my, why has it been so slow? Oh my God, I've overloaded. Uh, do I need to fast? No, I'm going to have to. Does it matter which RCPP? Oh, why has it been so weird? Sorry, my meeting controls have gone really dodgy. Okay, let me just hide those. Okay. Yes. Okay. So fast LM do I want to use from? Do not use the formula interface. Okay, yeah. Fast LM CPP. Okay, let's use Armadillo. Why not? Oh, it has been so stressy. Do I have that? No, that's a shame. Doesn't have any. Yeah, okay. So then we can add RCPP Armadillo Fast LM. Is that it? No. Small M. And that goes x, y, so we can do that. And then the other, ooh, there we go. Um, the, big, and, um, so big and, yeah. like that. Big or, uh, everything lowercase, yeah. Everything lowercase. What's the, is that yeah. a package? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Big LM, and then does it have? Is it does it use then the function big LM, or does it use? Yes, probably. Uh, 
Oh, it's got two G's mm. in the function. No, there's two functions. Okay, that's I mean, great function. Maybe. Oh, it's big G L M. Right. Okay. <laughs> big. <laughs> okay. So that uses a formula, possibly. Okay. Example, big LM. Mm. Okay, so I think I'll just use the formula and hopefully that will work. Uh, sorry, this is actually taking, well, I just quickly do this and then obviously it's taking me ages to actually get stuff installed. But we're almost there and then I'll run this and it will definitely work. Well, I'm not sure it's how big is this? Uh, N times P. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, so then that gives us 400. I mean, these aren't going to be very long. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Which one's that for? Wait, where's the, can't I see? oh yeah, didn't we have this last time where you couldn't get the trace back? Which one do you reckon that's for? Model dot frame, okay, what if I take them out one at a time? Can you do it without this one? Yeah. We're teaching debugging techniques now too. Yeah, <laughs> very uh, satisfying. No, don't save it, don't worry about it. Please stop. <laughs> Okay, okay, it still didn't like that. Okay, so maybe it's the big one. <clears throat> so, does it like this? Okay, so it's a big one I need to do differently when I actually get that around one to had, it. Like, funny, I think we did chunk big LM maybe in advance of doing it. Chunk, ugh. If you look at the examples, there's Are like, you, Wait, this is for like, like updating it. What's FF? That's the... FF is the, form the formula. That's the formula. Yes. And then you've got chunk, which is... Yeah. Which is... Which, which would be... Because this is like you can update it, but so chunk one just needs to be the data, yeah. which I guess is... Not that I just took this from somewhere. But isn't the data... Oh, well, I don't know. What's W even doing? Hmm. I would have thought it would be okay with that, but maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna give up uh, because I'm taking loads of time doing nothing. This is, we've got this guy. Bigger. Mm. Still looks. I mean, for this, for this, these instances, which are probably rubbish and not yeah. representative. But anyway, these are kind of how I would expect them to go with the LMs. Mm -hmm. Then we've got speed GLM, which is not speed. <laughs> and then we've got big GLM or big LM, sorry, um, which okay. is kind of fine. But that's, but we know that I think both of these two, speed and big, are aimed at like big data sets. So maybe we would see if we did this more, it would be better. But there's simply no way of knowing. <laughs> um, possible to tell. Imposs on. Impossible to tell. Um, but also, I just know that there's like this is this like question one. So, um, also, there's loads more examples of me being unsure about why my results are bad. Um, so, look forward to them. Uh, right. What package implements a version of Match that's faster for repeated lookups? How much faster is it? Oh, uh, I this one. Fast oh match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got too. Uh, I didn't do a speed test because I got bored of speed tests. I mean, pretty quickly. There's also loads of speed tests in this. Um, but apparently, it's obviously, probably, 
because it's repeated, the point is that the first one is not doesn't actually make that much difference, but it's the later ones that you really see the benefit. So it really makes a big difference later on. Okay, four functions that convert a string into a date time object. What are their strengths and weaknesses? Again, I just kind of shoved several into a, a speed thing. Didn't really think about what their strengths and weaknesses were. Uh, I just kind of was like, these are some objects. And actually there's, I'm, I, not, I think I'm not even doing that many. There's like loads of other ones. I don't have like as POSIX CT or anything. Uh, so I've got as date, I've got as date, I've got past date time, I've got any date. That's what they look like. Uh, so I guess you would have of those, loop date would be the fastest. Um, I saw that in some discussion about dates, well, and in, in my own experience and stuff, like some issues can be things like not dealing well with dates before a certain time frame, before a certain date. Um, or I guess some are, some are probably not good at passing dates that they might be very specific, like some that are faster might be very specific about the format that you put stuff in. Whereas like if you have checks and you have the ability to put in like any format that's roughly date-like, then it'll be slower, but probably more accurate or have less issues, maybe. There's the kinds of things that I imagine they want as answers here. But I don't know which ones relate to which, uh, which functions. Okay. Sounds fair. <laughs> okay. I, which I'm guessing something is vectorized too. Something's going to be vectorized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, which packages provide the ability to compute a role in mean? Again, quite a lot, I, I would say. Uh, so, I mean, these ones, for example, but I mean, I, I guess maybe it wants you to again, well, no, because I guess this, this part is all about like research. So the point is like, can you find packages that do this? Yes. Arguably you should also speed test them at this stage, but these are some packages. There are loads, there are loads. This is actually, there are loads more than that as well. So then you would want to look at them in more detail to decide which one you wanted. I probably want data table. What are the alternatives to Optim? Uh, which is an opportunity for us to look at a CRAN task view. It's aesthetic. Um, okay. So this is what a crown task view looks like. I don't know if you were both really familiar with crown task views before. I have not encountered them, I don't think. I don't think I've found them. So you've got like some packages here. So like as a replacement for extension of the optim function in base R, the optim X package exists, uh, does stuff in a single statement. Optim R extends it, has more method choices. OPMifies several solvers, which has data results for easy comparison. What are we looking for here? Just alternatives. Alternatives don't need to be don't need to be faster. Um, this package ROI has a framework for handling them. Different problem classes. And things can be transparent to the user. And then you've got CVXR as well. Convex optimization problems in a natural way, which is how I like my convex optimization problems. Um, it does, you can see it does a bunch of stuff because which is something I feel like I'm foreshadowing too much, but stuff that we come onto is like all these extra steps, they all add up, but can be better for your use case. But. Um, so yeah, I mean, these do other stuff, but let's, I mean, there's so many packages that are relevant to your interests if you're interested in optimization. Smooth, so yeah, that's an option. Um, but yeah, I think the top ones are, I think the kind of key ones that we were looking at here, these types of ones, as alternatives to opt, opt in, um, and shows you the depth of 
uh, Crown Task view. Uh, doing as little as possible. Uh, so the point here was that uh, one of the steps that you can take is to refine your functions or kind of strip them out so that they are more tailored to the task because then they're easier to optimize. So they can be really specific to the data type that you're using, um, that kind of thing. And it kind of occurred to me, one of the things which is why I put discussion point, um, probably not a huge discussion point, but that like something that I am often, I often read or get kind of like something that's indicated as it's useful to have functions that are more generalizable often because then you don't have to rewrite very kind of niche functions again and again like it's good to have the ability to use them for uh, a range of problems but I guess what the point is is that they obviously will be less efficient because they'll need to be like certain levels of checks in them and they'll need to be usable in different circumstances um but i guess this kind of underlined the idea of like you know there are costs to optimization it's not just like you know if you're having to write like a lot more functions than you would otherwise because you're trying to save like a little bit of time in terms of whether you identify what the data type is right at the start there are other reasons why you might not want to do that hmm Makes you think. Yeah, uh, I think the hardest part of any kind of encapsulation problem is deciding at what point have you made it so small that it's yeah. now useless. Yeah. And where do you stop? Like, yeah, that's always hard when you're writing functions. And I guess if you're doing like object oriented, I guess it's the same concept. At what point is my tiny minimal object useless? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, the point of a lot of this stuff is to avoid duplicating code and minimizing you know because that's another kind of performance optimization is your own personal human performance and like not using your time doing stuff that's uh like writing out the same code or very similar code again and again um okay but there were things that could be relevant to this uh this idea which was doing as little as possible um, <laughs> So uh, the function should work with your data as it is, rather than coercing to a different type. Um, this uh, comes up quite a lot um, in the exercises and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that'll make it quicker. Um, also, possibly more effective because also sometimes coercing stuff to a different type is not always predictable. So you might have a dodgier function anyway. Um, possibly. Uh, some functions are more efficient if you provide more information. So there are some argument values that you can sometimes specify, and that will make things quicker because either um, functions can then like they don't need to go through their own process of working out what the best approach is, um, or they might instead plump for their default version, their default approach, which might not be the most efficient thing for your specific use case. Um, example given here, one of the examples is that unlist x usernames equals false is going to be much faster than just unlist x, which is fun, didn't know that. I kind of, I guess I just always never really thought about it, but it kind of felt like the more arguments you put in, the more it would need to think about them, but obviously that's not quite how it works, um, particularly when it has defaults anyway, so like those defaults are going to get processed whether or not you've set them or not. Um, so uh, another thing is that if you're calling a method repeatedly, you can just do the method lookup once and that avoids the cost of setup and method dispatch. So in this example, mean.default was faster than mean for some vectors. So that means that you're not uh, dealing with method dispatch every time it gets called. Uh, and then the size of the input matters. So in this example, there's not a huge difference when you're looking at very big vectors or even quite big vectors, because then the time of the, the actual, the time that the function spends is predominantly happening on the time spent computing the mean, 
and not finding the underlying implementation. Whereas if you've got small vectors, it's going to, that the time that's spent finding the implementation is going to be like a bigger proportional amount of time. So the saving is proportionally bigger. So again, that's the reason to use realistic data. Um, and something important is, which we've kind of covered a little bit, but that is that speed can be at the cost of safety sometimes. So you can make stuff faster by stripping out a bunch of things that are designed to ensure that errors are caught and or that data is being processed according to the type that it is and allowing for kind of greater functionality. Um, and sometimes if you take those out, if you're not thinking about why you're doing that, you might be at a point where like you've got something that's a lot faster, but also is actually failing in ways that you don't really realize it's even failing. Dangerous. Okay, some more exercises. Hmm, what is the difference between row sums and dot row sums? Well, row sums is a wrapper around dot row sums. So it adds in some extra stuff. Can I show you that? Okay, so if we look at row sums, let me show it here. A row sum. Actually, no, let's show it here. <laughs> Does that just show me the source code? Yes, okay, cool. So this, so here is, no wait, where is Rosam's gone? Is using the dot internal. Dot internal here. Remember that was another thing you pointed out that you, you could try. Yes. Um, and you can see at the top that we've got like, if it's a data frame, do this. If it's not an array and the length of the then have an error. And also have an error if you've got dimensions that don't work, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, who needs all that when you could just whack it through dot row sums? Um, but I think, so you might expect it to be slower but safer. Although, God, I swear this changes every time. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, reasons. Uh, <laughs> I did not find it to be slower, um, but, but possibly I should have found it to be slower. Um, but it sounded like it wasn't generally, it didn't make a huge difference anyway. So might as well use row sums rather than row sums, unless anyone found anything different. But uh, that is, that's uh, conclusive, very conclusive. Okay, make a faster version of chi square test uh, that only computes the statistic when the input is two numeric vectors with no missing values. Oh, I feel like I didn't read that properly when I did this, but maybe I did, let's see. When the input is two, okay, yeah, because you're taking out the stuff that's like the checks on it. So yeah, I mean, I guess again, if we look at chi's, yeah, chi-square test, you get those, hey, let's go back to the console, you get those, it's long. Um, lots of things, but yeah, yeah, there were loads of if else statements, which is probably indicative. Um, so, data frame do this, if it's a matrix, do this, the length is this, do this. Oh, yeah, I think I changed it. Oh, for God's sake. I think I started out doing it as two numeric vectors and then I was like, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna simplify it and do it like this. So that was unnecessary. I should have kept it as two numeric vectors. But imagine that uh, I have done it as two numeric vectors and there's another couple of lines here dealing with that. Um, but this just cuts out pretty much all these kind of like, if this, then do this types of stuff. Uh, did that then? Hard to tell. Those are flat. <laughs> ah, this is great. Um, I mean, I would say that's slightly fatter than that one. And it's just the first time was really, I'm guessing for the first time, it might, might just be a random time. Um, does anyone else have a go at this one? <laughs> Maybe. You know, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, 
yeah. <laughs> that's probably why I need. Is that log? No, yeah, maybe that's why it'd be good to have some other, like, do it in log violins rather than doing it on these ones. Uh, okay, then vectorization. So you can make problems. Uh, some reasons to do this are that you can make the problem simpler, so you can think about the entire vectors rather than component parts. Uh, sure, I wasn't sure whether that did make it simpler because they still have the component parts, but yeah, that's what was said. And then uh, if you vectorize, fun vectorize loops, vectorize functions with loops, loops are written in C instead of R, which are faster, if you vectorize them. I, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what I'm saying. Um, so there are some key applications of this technique. So you get vectorized matrix functions, row sums, call sums, row means, call means, those kind of things are like, because they're specific to their task, they're like even faster as well than like doing like an apply function or something like that. Um, vectorized subsetting, which I use this a lot, I think. Um, <laughs> so you can like replace almost in values with zero, for example, uh, by doing something like this. So you're using your subsetting. Uh, and it's also good for extracting and replacing values that are in scattered locations, uh, I guess, because you can look over the vectors and it's not to do with going through each individual bit. Um, so there are some downsides. A downside is that it's harder to predict how operations will scale. And there was an example of that in the book, uh, which well, that's basically the, the fact. Um, and then another point made was that you're often better off rather than kind of, you know, doing something that feels like possibly a bit unnatural. If you're if you're if you're stuck on something that's still vectorizing a function, you're often better off writing it in C++, which is what we're looking at partially, possibly in the next chapter. So we'll come to that. Uh, so some more exercises, of course. So density functions have a common interface, which you can see if you look at the help. Which arguments are vectorized over? And what does this do? R norm 10 mean 10 to 1. So they're basically vectorized over their numeric arguments and they have three. They have their first argument, which you give it. They have mean, they have SD. Um, and this particular function, by having this kind of sequence here, it means that uh, this is uh, when this generates numbers from different normal distributions, the normal distributions differ in their mean. And the first one, the mean is 10 down to uh, 1 sequentially. Uh, so you can have your little sequences there. So it will do it over a vector. Compare the speed of apply x1 sum with rho sums x for varying sizes of x. Is this where I used? Okay, yeah, this was, you can use bench press. Don't know whether we've discussed that before. Uh, <laughs> but with benchmark, and it does a bunch of different, you can include a bunch of different things so that it does this benchmarking, but then I think it does it for a bunch of different sizes of stuff. Uh, or on whatever value you're doing, but here different sizes. So this, for example, you've got apply is kind of pinky coral one, and then row sums is this blue one. And yeah, you can see not only does apply, yeah, it's kind of like apply gets higher and higher, but it's not like linear. Um, and by the time you're at like this huge number, huge number, Largish number of rows and columns, uh, the difference is much darker than it is right when you're like a, you know, 50 or whatever. How can you use cross prod to compute a weighted sum? How much faster is it than the naive sum x times w? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think I just literally copied this from somewhere. Um, so uh, da -da -da. we use cross prod by putting the vectors in it, and then they go into row and column vectors, and then they get multiplied. 
Great. So we can see that this is the same as this. Um, and if we compare those, this one and cross prod, uh, is that what I was expecting? So sum is faster, I would say. So yeah, yeah is that what it said? It said how much faster is it? Mm, not faster. That's my conclusion. I think when I did this before, it was faster. I don't know. Maybe it's to do with how it's knitted. Maybe something to do with it being an R markdown has made some functions slower. Is that believable? I mean, I definitely was like the with this one. I mean, it, it was still weird because I remember it had like um, weird spikes. It was quite spiky, which maybe is to do with the size or something. But I mean. Um, Try it again. Like if we just copy paste the yeah. like snippet. Uh, and maybe you get, I don't know. Wait a second. Is that going to work? Yeah. Bench press. Do I need this? Next of you? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, let's just go into it's going to a fresh R script. I'm going to remember that. Uh, But yeah, it takes a while to do this. Ooh. So soothing. You could like make a cup of tea while it does this. <laughs> Has anybody ever used the Bieber package? I've seen it, but I haven't used it. It, I, it probably would be good. Yeah, it's it'll basically just beep whenever you're done with something. Hmm. Doesn't this give me a do I need to put in a plot or something? Oh god. Plots? No. Hmm. Uh oh it's because I've got some way of doing it which I've hidden. Okay. One second, let me just find what are we doing here? some uh, cross prod, that's it. Do that, we do that. And then I don't bother showing this because it's just a lot of text. Okay, well, this is what we want. Eesh. Is that gonna, doesn't that need to be a Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I think it's because you didn't um, save it to the weighted sum. Line one, line one, you didn't assign it. Mm. And how did I? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Literally, um, just running on like such low brain power right now is what I'm getting from this session. So, do you guys have Blues Clues? Do you know what that show is? Or do yeah. they explore? Yeah. This is like, sometimes I watch the like people who do Tidy Tuesday screencasts and like they'll make something and I feel like I'm Dora the Explorer, like I'm yelling at my screen, like, you forgot a comma! <laughs> comma! Uh, yep. Okay, right. Now, let's see if it looks. Yeah, it was weird like this. Oh. Yeah. Does that? I mean, it's it's different. What happens at eight. But is it better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe I should set the seed or something. But <laughs> it definitely feels wrong, <laughs> but wrong in a different way to this one. Uh, so that's uh, been helpful. Um, standard R point that copy or modify happens in many areas, and that is painful. And if you grow objects with loops, that is painful. 
because it gets copied every time. So avoid doing that. You might want to use data table. But other than that, you can also just generally avoid doing that. OK, case study, right. I thought rather than me literally typing out exactly what it said in the book, I would just go to the book because it is like, this is what I do. So it was just going to be the same. OK, it's not actually that long, case study. Um, so this is looking at making t-tests faster. So we've got 100 experiments and each collects data on 15 individuals, which are in two different groups. So we get some random data. Uh, and then, so a couple of ways to use t-test, formula interface, or provide two vectors. And we've done some timing. I like, I say we, they, the Hadley, and possibly who else wrote this. Um, uh, so you get this t-test, and then you get this one, which, which one's got the, right, yeah, okay. Uh, so this one's a lot faster without these. So this one's got the formula and this one doesn't have the formula. So faster without the formula. Um, so we can, if we want to save the values, we can add this map double, uh, which apparently we talked about, and that adds some overhead. So it's now very slightly slower. Um, but we want to make it faster. Uh, so let's look at the source code, which is, is it here? No, it's not here. We would need to look at it ourselves. Uh, I'm seeing lots of if else's, so we've already know what they mean. Yep, okay. What was it saying? It does a lot more than just copy the t, 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 t statistic. Yeah. Does it ever? Um, it also computes, like I mentioned, the p value and formats the output for printing. Sure. Apparently that's what it does. Um, so we can strip those out if you don't need them. I mean, this certainly does look smaller, <laughs> a lot smaller. Uh, so then we're at 0 0.04 and before we we're like 0 0.25 or something like that. So it's faster. And we can make it faster even than that by vectorizing it. So instead of looping over the array outside the function, which we do, why are we doing that? Oh, is it saying you have this? We could. Uh, Modify it to work with a matrix. So you've got row means instead of means, row sums. And then it goes through more. What is this? Point zero one five. So much faster. Around a thousand dollars faster than where we started, which was point two seconds or something. So it's all been worth it. Um, okay, then there's other techniques to just like read things. Uh, I think that's my last, yeah, that's my last slide. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, I felt like overall on that chapter, I felt like there weren't loads of kind of like massive surprises. <laughs> and most of the exercises were like, look up this thing. And I was like, yeah. Um, but uh, good to round off. That I thought the side of things. Was pretty cool. The witch was cool. Grand views. That's pretty oh, cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> check that I out. also liked finding out about bench press, which wasn't. I don't know if that was mentioned in the chapter, but finding out about it through looking at uh, this kind of problem was good. Um, I'm confused by why so many of the things that I run don't look how I expect them to run. But I think that's a me problem rather than necessarily a turns out everything I was wrong. Everything is wrong and only you know it. <laughs> yeah. it is, it's possible, plausible even, but for now, we'll assume.
will assume that I'm wrong. Or I don't even know. I don't I don't know what's happening. I feel like often in some of those cases, I'm literally doing what someone else has done and getting different responses. I mean, obviously there's some of it's randomness, but like some of it you would expect. The whole point of doing it like thousands of times is to eliminate that randomness. So hmm. that's a shame. What I didn't do was because I actually had to write most of it. I wrote some of it on the weekend and then some of it today. But what I would have done if I'd had time was look at what someone else had done on it in terms of the uh, videos from other weeks to see if anyone had any interesting examples which worked better than mine. But uh, I didn't do that. So we've all, we've all suffered for that. <laughs> okay. Um, so we only have one left. I think, which is longer and probably more complicated, but yeah. I think, I think we can try to do it. Yeah, I think I, I, I started reading um, that chapter and I think it can be condensed. So I can give it a try <laughs> to do it in one session. But if, you, if you're looking at it and you're like, God, I've already done like so many pages or slides or whatever you're doing, and it's ridiculous, then we can split it, but I think it would be good to do it more. I mean, I, I never did anything with C++, so... Mm. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's very basic, so it, it's... Um, yeah, I think it should be possible, and then maybe I will not go into deep into everything, but it should be okay. <laughs> awesome. Ooh. Okay. All right. We're so close. Yay, well, team! Yeah. yeah. Very exciting. See you next week then. When did yeah. we start this? Was it like summer, sometime in the summer? Summer. So it's not be. It's not like we've been doing this for a year. We've been doing it for like no, nine no, months, yeah. eight months, something like that. Eight months, yeah. About eight months, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. All right. Okay. See you next week then. Bye. Bye.